I'm Dr. Laura Cassidy here with the Dyslexia Resource Center podcast. We have a special guest today. We're excited to be here and we're going to talk about assistive technology for dyslexic students. First, I want to sort of set this up and then we'll go into greater detail. We think about the definition of dyslexia, which is an unexpected difficulty in reading for an individual who has the intelligence to be a much better reader and it's usually due to phonological processing issue, which is matching the sounds of speech and the written word. And so, so as we think about that, that that's the definition and what assistive technology is, it is, as the word says, technology to help those students, such as dyslexic students, have greater access to the printed word. So for reading, for writing, for spelling. And what you're going to see today is it's, it's really taken off. It's a real game changer and I think an equalizer for the dyslexic student. Um, we are not endorsing any product. We are going to just talk about in generalities about the, the products that are offered. We will say some names of some products because we're familiar with them. But I think what's important for students and parents to understand is this, these technologies are a huge asset and it's important that you know what's out there, that you do your own research so that you can find what's best for your child and that you can have a dialogue with, with the school. And I want to introduce our special guest today, uh, Sabrina Ward. She has her master's in education and she's a certified academic language therapist. She works at Louisiana Key Academy in Baton Rouge, uh, the first school and the one that's been there the longest. And she is a, she is the writing and social studies master teacher. So we're going to go back and forth and talk about a l different things here, but how would you define assistive technology and, and how you see its place and need in the classroom? Yeah, um, I think your definition was great. It is simply technology that gives not just dyslexic students, but our dyslexic students, the, I guess, the leg up that they need and not to put them ahead of anybody, but it's to give them an even playing field to give them the opportunity to access the text that they need to read or give them what they need in order to write or complete assignments. We know for our students that everything doesn't come as easy as it does for a non-dyslexic, such as reading text. And so there are assistive technologies that would help them get that information and be able to focus on the content instead of having to focus on decoding word by word, syllable by syllable. I would want to discuss how assistive technology can enhance learning, boost confidence, you know, basically what is it and why it's important for dyslexic students. So Sabrina? Thinking back to the definition, of, it's a struggle in reading and its foundation at its core um, it's a, a difficulty in decoding. And so that can have an impact on students' confidence, whether they're in a room of all dyslexics or they're in a traditional setting, it can have an impact on students' uh, confidence. And so being able to have the resources or the technology that allow students, dyslexic students, to access text or produce work in a way that makes it easier for them to focus on the actual content of the material and the information that they do know, it can definitely boost a student's confidence. Yes, and I like to say it's a great equalizer. And so I encourage people to think of dyslexia. Again, it's matching the spoken word to the written word and it's vice versa. So, so think of dyslexia as the umbrella term 
And then the manifestations don't look the same in everybody. I think that's important to know what your child may need may be different for another child, but um, over 90% of kids it manifests as, as um, slow reading, not slow thinking, but slow reading with just manually work. Um, but often it's manifest with poor spelling, difficulty with learning how to write, um, sometimes can be um, when called on and you have to uh, come up with the answer quickly to retrieve those words, that word retrieval, so that which is the opposite of reading, so to speak. So those are all the ways that dyslexia can impact a student. And we're going to look at the technology that's available uh, to address some of these areas. And I think it's important for parents to understand, you know, the, there's there's two aspects, of course, and we were talking about different platforms, and that's the foundation for this assistive technology. And it, this can be used on your laptop, a desktop, a laptop, or your phone. Now, if you're using it on your uh, desktop or laptop, you're going to have more space storage space, but it may be a more expensive program as opposed to if you're using it on your phone, which you can get some, get an app and maybe less expensive um, assistive technology, but it, you won't have the storage. So you really have to see what works best in each situation. You know, if the touch screen helps your child um, and those are the things to look at. And we'll talk a little bit of the programs um, and those features as we go along. But I want to start, and as I mentioned, Sabrina, she's the master teacher and has taught um, social studies and writing. So let's talk a little bit about text-to-speech uh, software um, for uh, the dyslexic student. I think you're familiar with uh, Read and Write. For our students, for test to Louisiana Key Academy, it's a very friendly program. It doesn't have too many features that might cause another burden on the students. Teachers can see their students' work or students can share it if they're working in groups, whether the students want to open it as a Google extension, they have that option and the teacher can upload or the student can upload a PDF and the PDF can be read to them via text-to-speech. And so if a student, for example, highlights specific text on the page, the program Read and Write will read to the student. The student can then, you know, do other features on there that we can talk about, such as like annotations and highlighting. Um, so that's one of the assistive technologies that would really, you know, bridge that gap between decoding and understanding the text. Having to focus so much on actually decoding can, you know, overshadow the actual information that students need to retain or the information that students know. Like Dr. Cassidy said, it's dyslexia is about slow reading, not slow thinking. And so read and write is a great program. It's a simple program and can be used as a Google extension and it's also a free resource. So, so what about immersive reader? I know that the school uses immersive reader as well. And I think you have experience with that. Absolutely. Yes, we do use immersive reader, which is a Microsoft program. So it's very similar to rewrite. Teachers can upload a PDF or a document or students can type on it. You can also use it on different platforms and it will read the text to the students. It'll also break down the text in a way so to label the information, label the words or the sentences with parts of speech. Students can still annotate on it as well. That feature or that program is also a simple one. Again, it's not a lot of components to it that you have to be technologically advanced. And so it's another program that students can use collaboratively in a classroom setting. 
They can uh, share it with students and teachers. Teachers can look on the document with their student, which is also helpful in the classroom. Yeah, so I think for, for science, for social studies, so, you know, where there's a lot of multisyllabic words um, that the dyslexic student may struggle with, immersive reader is a great tool or I any of these tools. We're not, again, we're just trying to give you as many options as possible. And, and the immersive reader works with, obviously, it's a Microsoft product, Windows 10 or Windows 11, but so that they can hear the content. I mean, I think a chapter can be downloaded so that they have access to grade level material. What the purpose is for this assistive technology, as the child, as the student gets older, they're not reading from this left anterior middle portion of the brain, they're reading more posteriorly. And in the dyslexic student, it's on the right side, but it's still, it's, as you age, the way you read is no longer the same. It's not just about decoding. You're looking at uh, the meaning of the word, the sound of the word, and what the word looks like. And so what, we're, what I'd encourage you is you don't want to put a fifth grader in second grade material because they need to learn the vocabulary. They need to learn the content. And as this is being read to them, and if they're following along, this is going to help their fluency because we work on single word fluency when they're in the younger age, but the goal is connected text fluency. And that's what these products really bring to the table. And they, again, I like the fact that, uh, Ms. Ward, you talked about you know, they can uh, share it with the teacher, share it with other students, uh, because obviously that's part of school as well. Now, the other ones, I do want to talk about two other product products. And one thing I'll say is some of these, like Immersive Reader, you, you know, your teacher can um, give that to you as homework. So the read and write you can use on your own, immersive reader you can use on your own, or it can be in conjunction with your classmates. But there are two that I want to talk about that are going to be used primarily with the school. And so this is important for you to have in your repertoire, so to speak, so you can talk to the school. And one is uh, Kurzweil. And Kurzweil 3000, it is um, a, a more expensive product, but it is a very thorough product and it is usually going to be bought not by individuals, but by the school. And it's got, um, you know, it comes in multiple languages. It's got 31 voices and it's text to speech. It's got the dictionary, the spelling tool, and also a writing template. And I know that also Kurzweil the teacher could download the test into Kurzweil and make sure that the, the dyslexic student is getting the accommodation. So that's just another assistive technology tool that you should know about. And then um, Microsoft Teams has reading progress, which um, is, again, it is text to speech, but it has the ability and this is something you would work with your school and the teacher is in charge of this and it's great for social studies, science and reading, but they can download a lesson into the reading progress and then the students read the passages out loud or they can listen. So it's either um, it's speech to text and it's text to speech. But what it does is it allows the teacher to track reading fluency. It looks at percent accuracy and words per minute, which are both part of uh, fluency with that intonation. So, at, cause we're gonna segue to, uh, from text to speech to speech to text, but that, that reading progress can do both. And the benefit though for the speech to text piece is again, the teacher can uh, set the lesson up, student then reads it, and 
and you know it will actually tell the teacher if there are deletions if there are uh, missions etc i think that's important because what i'm always pushing for is this um connected text reading so in school and out of school so let's go on to other um speech to text software uh sabrina i think you might be familiar with either dragon naturally speaking or natural reader are you familiar with those um so i am familiar with uh natural reader and so especially in in a writing setting where students have to uh read or write longer part longer pieces this is especially helpful any speech to text program is especially helpful so when students are writing say an essay or a paragraph they aren't focused so much on making sure all of their words are spelled correctly or making sure that uh commas are in the proper place all of those things that are equivalent to the form of writing uh, students can be focused on the content of their writing, the things that they actually know, and getting that on paper. And so it's as simple as clicking a button and the student talking to their computer or their phone, whatever device they're using. And so once students are speaking to the computer, the program will write it out for them. And so then students can focus on you know, making those revision and um, editing steps that they need to make those corrections. But initially, we want students to focus on the content of their writing, getting that information from their brain to the paper, and having an assistive technology like Natural Reader, any speech-to-text program is what students need, is what dyslexic students need in order to do that. Yeah, and I think, I think, you know, if the parents, if you get pushback about this, I mean, I think what, S Sabrina, your point being, this is a first step in the, in the writing, in writing an essay. And because I think teachers sometimes don't understand and they'll say, oh, isn't that cheating? And it's not cheating. It's just giving them a way, help with their deficit and use their strengths. So their strengths are gonna be their creativity, their big ideas, their weakness is gonna be again, with the writing process itself. We, we haven't mentioned, but at least half of these kids have ADD, ADHD. So, um, you know, they're gonna have that organizational focus component as well. And so the, between the two of them, this is just a way, like you said so well, get their thoughts out and then to go more into the structure of writing uh, itself. Parents, please understand that and then don't be intimidated, um, but you, you might have to push a little bit for one of these programs. A and, you know, if they have a writing assignment at home, they could use the Dragon Naturally Speaking or the Natural Reader. It seems to me that this technology wasn't very good, but it sounds like it's improved quite a bit. Is that that's correct? Absolutely. Yeah, I know for Natural Reader students, it's not too many buttons that the students have to focus on. Um, it also has the text to speech feature that has, you know, the different voices, but for speech to text, um, it's very user friendly and we don't want students to become, um, you know, burdened by something that's supposed to be helping them. Um, and so it is, you know, friendly for our students. So we talked about um, text to speech, speech to text, we've mentioned reading, We've mentioned writing. Um, and then, the, of course, there are other resources for writing. Of course, there's spell check, there's Grammarly, and you want to make sure that your uh, students have that. And of course, then we're just going to go, you know, to AI, and then the AI is going to write it for you. <laughs> um, but let's talk a little bit about math and science. Um, for math, uh, there, there, 
are different technologies. Uh, IXL is a popular one that is used, um, which is a, a computer program that is used and you might not think of it as assistive technology, but it definitely has a lot of features on it. And that would usually be in conjunction with the school. And I do want to give a plug for it because I think it's a great program and I'm sure there are other programs out there. But what the teacher can do is um, highlight the lessons that the students need to know. And then the student can go in there at home and access the lesson and the lessons will um, give f and for in Louisiana it follows Louisiana state standards and then they can practice certain skills actually in English or math on IXL but we're, since we're talking about math and then um, if it's incorrect it will take you through the process of what the correct answer is uh, so I think that's a worthwhile product to look at for for science, I think the the wave of now and the future for kids with dyslexia is virtual reality. Uh, we, there are multiple products out there. The school Louisiana Key Academy has been testing and working with some groups, um, and there are things you have to be careful of so that you know that the child is accessing. The platform you want to and that you can you know see what the what the lesson is that the student is on also um this can be uh more expensive but the beauty of it is for any student but i think really for a dyslexic student is the virtual reality you know puts the student in the middle of some location or in a science lab and they can uh they can do the science experiment and not mess up the lab, <laughs> but learn and actually they're uh, participating. So th those are uh, things that you want to ask if you're a parent, ask your school, you know, do they have uh, virtual reality labs and science? Do they have that technology? Are they looking at that technology? And again, you know, in six months, there'll be many more products and many more uh, venues, which is, is great. So um, this, this is an exciting time for, for school. So let's talk about now some uh, study and organizational tools. Uh, there's examples of this, OneNote, Evernote, Notability. Uh, what about those, Ms. Ward? I am familiar with Evernote and OneNote. We can start with OneNote. It's another Microsoft uh, program and so I believe Dr. Passini mentioned towards the beginning that one thing that students who are dyslexic may struggle with is organizational skills. And so that organizational skills reflects itself in different areas, whether it's in their writing or um, note taking or, or also like physical organizational skills like their binder. And so with OneNote, again, it has that sharing capability so students can use it collaboratively with teammates in their groups or with their teachers. And then it has those features that'll help them with the actual writing form. So once students have done speech to text on it, they also have the feature to do spell check and grammar check. So students can, again, get that assistance in the form after focusing on the content of their writing. There are other features like voice recording. I know for at LKA, we have some students who use voice recording for their writing. And so instead of using text to speech, they might actually record their voice and then attach it to the document. And then the teacher can go back and play what the students are saying. And so the teacher can focus on what the student actually knows and has retained from the lesson. Again, it's a similar toolbar to the Microsoft other platforms. So like Immersive Reader or Word, the toolbar is the exact same toolbar or very similar. And there are just other features that'll help students. So like adding audio and video, things that students might need for projects or group 
assignments. And then Evernote is similar. So Evernote integrates with Slack and Google Suite, if that's something that your child's uh, school uses. And so it'll help the students with note taking. They can do audio recording, uh, whether it's recording themselves or recording a lesson. Recording lessons, that's going to be something that has to be, think, have to be approved by the school because now you're recording someone else's voice. But they can record their own voice. They can record themselves with notes or reading. It has a, a sketch feature, basic word processing fe features, such as like Word or Google Docs. And then it also has self-organizing features or assistance, so they can mark up PDFs, such as like annotating and note-taking, adding comments to a PDF. And also they can attach tasks and reminders. And so our kids have planners, but if your kid prefers a digital planner or calendar, it has that ability right there in Evernote. And then again, just like OneNote, they can partner with other students or teachers and share their tasks. They can assign tasks to different people if they're in a team, add to-do lists, and collaborate on documents. That was great, Ms. Ward, and thank you very much. I think, you know, again, there are all these tools I'm trying to give you an overview Every student's different. You need to really assess what your student needs, do some research. But in, in closing, I want to thank you for listening to this segment about assistive technology. And again, in six months, it's going to be different. But your, your job is to feel comfortable with this, know that it's important for your student, and then to be able to talk to the teacher, talk to the school, you're not asking for a leg up, you're asking for a playing field because they're using an alternate system to read that's an inefficient system, they have to work harder, and they're having difficulty connecting the speech, the, the writ written word to the, to the sound of speech, the spoken word. And after the fifth grade, Basically, wherever your student is reading, say in the 50th percentile or the 25th percentile or the 5th percentile, that, that's going to stay pretty much the same. That's those stud, there are studies that verify that, but it doesn't mean they can't access text, they can't have a successful life. So even if their reading is poor, these technologies allow the student, these smart students, to access grade level content, to participate in class, to do well on tests, it, and if it's done in conjunction with the school, they will really rise to the occasion. And again, there's technology to help them with their reading, their writing, their social studies, their math, and their science. And so I hope this has been helpful. Um, we're signing off from the Dyslexia Resource Center. Hopefully that you will join us on our next podcast. And thank you, Sabrina Ward, uh, for joining us today.